Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be going over Dave Ramsey and his baby steps, his seven baby steps, and we're gonna give our insight as to what we think which one should be followed. So we we got different opinions, but we love Dave Ramsey's content. We love what he puts out there. We're just gonna be going back and forth on this and give our give our thoughts on it. So Kirby, I'll let you start off. So one caveat to all of this is understand I followed Dave Ramsey's baby step through and through by the letter, by the law, beginning to the end. Now that I've went through all of the baby steps besides step number seven, because I mean, I do give, I just don't give maybe as much as I should, but I followed it to the letter. And, you know, now that I'm, I'm not going to say removed from the baby steps, but I've conquered that process and I've went on to other endeavors that let's circle back and see what parts of the baby step now that I have further financial literacy, further financial education, what parts of the baby steps that I agree and disagree with. With all that being said, Alex, let's get it off. Well, let's pop it off. Let's start it off. Let's get it going. Yeah. So do you want to start with like just one through seven, what the steps are? Let's go through one through seven. Yeah. Through one okay. Through seven. So I'll put it up here for you guys. Step one is save $1,000. So this $1,000, what that does is a mini emergency fund. This is like, you got a blown out tire. You got to change your spark plugs. Um, you're late on rent. I don't know. Some, something small, right? So something small comes up and you've got a thousand bucks to cover that fund or to cover that emergency. All right, so step one, $1,000. Back when I started, back in 2008, 2009 timeframe, 2010 timeframe, $1,000 was suffice. Um, I believe that the number should be like 2500 But if you have to start off at 1000 and you feel comfortable at 1000 that we will cover you know, any quick emergency in your life, then I think that's good to go. Only reason why I'm saying 2500 now is because inflation, the cost of everything has went higher. But again, understand your situation, an emergency. Understand what an emergency is. An emergency is not, hey, uh, I made a mistake and I ordered some food to go out and I don't have the money, so let's use the emergency fund. The emergency is true emergencies. Like Alex said, a blown out tire. Let's say your car needs some maintenance. A oil change is not an emergency. You know when the oil change is due. You should be budgeting for that oil change. An emergency is a true emergency. A family member passed away unexpectedly. You know, you're looking for the cheapest flight. You're not trying to find business class, first class to show up and show up. Somebody passed. They don't care how you look. I, it's not to go, oh, I need to go buy a dress for the funeral. I need to go buy a suit for the funeral. Just show up and be there. The person that's in the casket ain't laying there like, oh, dude, dude, he got on Ferragamo coming to see me. They ain't doing that. <laughs> Just show up. That's what an emergency <laughs> is. It's not all this extra stuff. That's, hey, call a cousin, call a friend, call a family member and say, hey, can I sleep on your couch? Not, oh, I need to go get a hotel room because because of this. Emergency is an emergency. But the only reason why I'm up in it to $2,500 because, you know, tires blowing out, needing new tires, you know, car maintenance and different little small additives has cost more sense. You know, Dave Ramsey started off with $1,000. So I'm just upping it a little bit just to give people more money. So it will prevent them from say, hey, I need to swipe this credit card. That's the only reason why I'm changing. Yeah. And step two is pay off all your debt after you have that small emergency fund built up. So this is everything minus the house. So if you own a house, it's not pay off your mortgage and then go to step three. It's Pay off your cars, pay off your credit cards, pay off medical bills, student loans, all consumer and all that extra debt. Pay all that off before you move to step three. That step three is three to six months of an emergency. But Kirby, do you got something on step two? Step two. Step two is that was the life changing thing for me. Um, of course, I'm thinking like everybody. I was thinking like everybody else thinking. Oh, all this money going towards debt. You know, I only got to pay $500 a month for this car. Why am I paying so much? This money could be going towards me living it up, doing other things. You know, 
then I start thinking that, oh, I'm smarter. Oh, I could be using that money to invest because the interest rate on the car payment is 5%. I can invest and make 8%. So that's a 3% gap. The truth of the matter is paying off the debt will give you more money in the long run to do all of those fancy ideas you have on the investment theater. Me paying off that $250,000 of debt gave me, you know, $5,000 a month of free money. I'm not saying free, but it's free money that I can allocate to where it needs to go. But it starts with the discipline. The discipline of paying off the debt gave me the discipline to focus on now take that money and invest, take that money to invest, take that money to invest over and over and over again. But paying off the debt is paramount. I mean, Alex, you heard the story. I told you about a lady that I was talking to. She was homeless. She was sleeping up under a bridge. And she called me and I said, we're going to go through this process step by step. You're not going to like what I say, but long as you agree to do what I say, no matter how much you cuss me out, we're going to be all right. And she followed the steps. Now, fast forward two, three years from there, she got a house, she had a kid, she got a new car, paid off. Everything's paid off. And she's living a very financially free life from there by paying off the debt. So paying off the debt, there's nothing that I would change about step two of Dave Ramsey plan. Not one thing. Yeah, and so Kirby, yeah, I know you got a lot on step two and it applies to you most, more than me because I didn't have debt when I started following Dave Ramsey's plan. But step three is three to six months of an emergency fund. I think this one is a little bit more time consuming and tedious for people because you have to add up all of your bills per month, all of them, and then multiply that by three to six, whatever you feel comfortable with. And that is what you should have in your savings and only touch it when it is a true emergency you get laid off and th that's really the purpose of it is it holds you over for three to six months if you're without a job and it gives you i i like that baby step because it really gives you a sense of comfort for most people following this step is you know they know that they're not worried i mean obviously they're worried about losing their job but they're not afraid they're not terrified of losing their job because they know that they've got a cushion to fall on if anything bad goes and at the same time, you've got that emergency fund built up in case there is a freak life emergency. So this is the area where Alex, I we don't we don't agree on. I don't think three to six months emergency fund is very time consuming, and this is why. The reason why is not it's three to six months of your monthly expenses, right? Once you eliminate all the debt, your monthly expenses is just your rent your utilities, your food, that's it. But if you if you count right now while you're in debt, you count how much that is compared to the consumer debt that you have, usually it's more. Usually to pay to, once you pay off all the debt and then now you have all that, that money from consumer debt that's free and clear, to fund your emergency fund, I say it may take three to six months max. It will take you a way shorter time than it is to pay off your debt. And then, but that emergency fund, I say three to six months. I, I'm going to more six to eight months now because, of course, inflation. But I don't believe that it takes longer or is more time consuming. I think it's faster once you free up. So let's give you an example. When I left the house that was $1,400 a month and went to an apartment that's $600 a month, that's $800. So that's $800. So $600 a month, 6, 12, 18. Let's say utilities was another five hundred dollars, so so six hundred five hundred dollars. That's eleven hundred dollars, eleven hundred dollars. But I saved eight hundred dollars, right? Going from a fourteen hundred dollar a month mortgage to a six hundred dollar a month apartment. So that's eight hundred dollars saving. So if it's eleven hundred dollars that I have to pay for rent and utilities, times six, that's sixty six hundred, eight sixteen. Just buy the switch. And I'm not gonna count the you know the lower cost of utilities, 8, 16, 24, 32, you know, that's four months. And then another four months will give you the 66. So it's about eight months, eight months of building an emergency fund. That's if you spend no other capital going towards your emergency fund. So it's still less than a year. 
So, but I think it's a faster time to get that emergency fund, but I believe it should be around six to eight months instead of three to six months. Because like you said, you know, you lose a job or something like that. You have that cushion before so you can weather the storm to get the next job. Yeah, I'm glad you commented back on that because <clears throat> I think you give more in insight from experience because I'm speaking on someone that didn't have debt. So to me, that was the longest process was saving that emergency fund. I could definitely see someone who was in debt that paying off the debt is the longest process. So I think, yeah, so I think once you've paid off your debt and you go into that step three, it's not as tedious as it was paying off your debt. Steps four, five, and six, you do them all at the same time. I'm just going to throw them up here one by one. Step four is invest 15% of your income towards retirement. I believe it's towards retirement. Is that correct, Kirby? Step five is save for your kid's college fund. And step six is pay off your house early. So basically after you've invested 15%, you've saved towards your kid's college fund, that freed up income after that goes towards your house to pay down your house, the mortgage of your house. Kirby. All right. So so for me, let's let's break these down one by one. Step four, 15% of your income. And this is this is the caveat the caveat to this is if you plan on this is the house that you're going to be in if you're in a house and you're going to pay it off i mean and you're going to stay there for the next 15 to 20 years then do i believe that you should pay off your house expeditiously no i believe you should max out your roth ira and then i believe that you should invest try to invest the max and the max is not the match that your company paid. The max is for 2024 is $24,000 $24, a year. So I would fully fund my Roth IRA, which is $7,000 a year in 2024. Then I will put as much money as I can in my Roth IRA. And then on top of that, if you have kids, I know this generation is moving towards having less kids. If you have kids, for me, I had a cheat code. I went to the military and passed off my uh, GI Bill to my kids because I got the degree in other means. But your kids, it's a twofold thing. So let's say you max out your Roth IRA and then you put in as much as you can in your 401k then I would, you know, 529, I would 529, you know, let's say your kid's just being born. And then, and this is what we do with our son, even though his, his college is uh, paid for. I don't use a 529 anymore because the college is paid for. So now I just put his money into a brokerage account and invest in mutual funds. And then I would put, you know, $500, that's when it started off, $500 a month towards, you know, him when he turns you know, 21, just getting him a leg up on life. Uh, you know, maybe it is not buying a car. Car is not even something the kid needs, in my opinion, is to give him that down payment on the house. You know, of course, we have multiple properties. He can live in one of those if that's what he chooses to do. But my kid, he will stay here forever. Let him tell it. But those are the things that I would do. I would focus more on building my retirement, building my Roth IRA, because and the truth of the matter is, and nobody wants to talk about this, if you needed the money to pay for different avenues out there, you can take the money from your Roth IRA after it's been there for five years. So I would focus on maxing that those different avenues out. I would never take a loan out for my 401k. I would invest that. But you have different avenues there to help your kids. But the onus should be on kids. And Alex, I know I'm running over, but as far as funding college tuition, I do not believe in sending your kid to a four-year university. I believe you should take your kid and put him in a local college that's regionally accepted, a regional accredited college, and then they get done with the prerequisites. And then if they want to go to a university, then they should spend the last two years there. Hopefully it's local to your house where you don't have to pay the expenses 
for them to live on campus. They can just go there, go to school, live with you, and then they can work their job and then pay for school. And then you can assist them in paying so they don't go into debt. But that's the only adjustments that I would make towards that. As far as the house go, like if you plan on living there, make the payments, you know, you you get comfortable, make sure you have that huge cushion with, you know, your retirement funds and then extra funds after that, you know, your kids taken care of, then I will pay off the house expeditiously. Baby step seven is one that both me and Kirby agree on. We don't like it. <laughs> so baby step seven, the part we don't like is giving money and i don't think it's or it's i think i forget how dave words it it's like live and i forgot how he words it exactly kirby but it's like give freely and you know basically living off of what you've accomplished but the thing that i would say is when you give money i highly question who so who are you giving it to and are they truthfully are they truly in need in actual desperate need of that money and because i can say from experience i give but not physical money and i can attest to kirby does the same is the knowledge you can give someone is way more valuable than just simply handing out some cash to somebody and i know kirby has i mean just for me alone mentored me and i see what you know say what you do with like the class and just other people just, just simply have questions and come to you for advice that advice you give them if they take it and they apply it is highly valuable and there's so many other ways that you can give opportunities, you can give jobs, you can like just help people. And I think that kind of giving is way better. If you've achieved a high net worth, you probably have some pull in some direction, some kind of power or whatever. So use that to help people, help people out. But physically giving your money to people, I just don't think there's any sense or any actual benefit to the other people person in doing that because it's a it's just putting a band-aid on it's just a temporary fix unless it's someone that's truly in need then you know like in a third world country then okay i can i can understand that that's my view yeah it, yeah it goes to that parable of you give a person a fish they eat for a day you teach somebody to fish they can eat forever my giving is more of knowledge less than financial because I don't believe in financing bad decisions. So when people give me the sob story, when they live on social media and they living it up big time, I have no sympathy, no heart for them. Now, is there people that I give money to? Yes, but it's not anybody that knows me. I refuse to give money to people that know me because I gave them, knowing that I, they know me, I know I gave them knowledge so they can do what they want to do. I mean, do what they need to do. If they choose not to do it, I'm not there to bail them out of their situation. And that's how a lot of people perceive me as, oh, well, Kirby does it this way. So I know he has the money. Well, if you know I do it this way, then you need to learn the ways that I do it and you need to follow the steps so you can be in the same position. Now, if you choose to give your money, that's great. But me, I choose to give knowledge. And I'm not saying I'm a cheapskate, but I'm trying to tell you, everybody I give money to is people that don't know me, people that can't dial my number and call me. And that's where I give it to you, right? Do I give money to people that's homeless? Yes. Do I go help out? Do I sometimes read, you know, sob stories uh, that they have on the news back in Detroit? And then I reach out to the uh, editor of newspapers, um, and ask them for their contact information to help them out. Yes. But besides that, my rule of thumb is if you know me, you cannot ask me for money because I know for 100% fact that I gave you and I provided you the tools, you just chose not to listen. So you have to pay for not taking the time to listen and putting it actionable or making it actionable in your life. 
And that's how I view the given phase of step seven. And with all that being said, guys, we'll close it out there. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to share this video, like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.